Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to welcome co-founder of Tuition Fit today, uh, Mark Salisbury. Mark Salisbury has spent 25 years in higher education as a soccer coach, admissions counselor, instructor, director of institutional research, academic admin and academic administrator. He has a PhD in higher education and studies how colleges and universities succeed or fail in helping students learn and grow. His re research has been published and cited in numerous academic journals and has been highlighted by NPR, WNYC, the New York Times, the Chronicle of Higher Education, and Inside Higher Ed. Two years ago, Mark started Tuition Fit to solve the lack of real college price transparency by crowdsourcing information. When he isn't working on Tuition Fit, he's busy raising his two boys, pedaling long distances on a stationary bike, and wishing he could be an improv comic. <laughs> Welcome, Mark. I'm so excited to have you today. That sounds so much better than I ever think about myself when you read that bio. Thank you. For it. It's I, great. I appreciate it. This is yeah. fun. I, I'm so glad to chat with you and, and your families and students today. Awesome. Well, I'm just going to ask you some questions so we can kind of get into exactly what tuition fit is and how students and their families can benefit. Yeah. So first, can you let me know why it's so hard to find out the real college prices and how did it get this way? Yeah, it's kind of a crazy story of, of really about a 40 year um, combination of the horse gets out of the barn and the train goes off the tracks. Yeah. So 40 years ago, even 30 years ago, a lot of places, the sticker price was what most people paid. And the financial aid that was given out was specifically for people with financial need, really mm -hmm. couldn't afford to go to that college without some help. Then the colleges really got on this idea that the public looks at the sticker price and makes an assumption about the value, the quality of that institution. And so they said, well, we should have a higher price because then the public will think we're better. Well, so anybody who sort of watches colleges and universities for a while knows that it's a total follow the leader, keep up with the Joneses environment. Mm -hmm. So for a couple sure. of schools do it. And then somebody else goes, well, we got to do that. Look at them. And then everybody got onto this bandwagon. And once they got onto this bandwagon, it's not a thing you can get off mm -hmm. because you can't tell people for years and years that, look, the reason our price is so high is because we're so good and it costs so much money to give all these students this great education. You can't be do doing that for five years. And then the next year, cut your price in half and go, no, really, we were just kidding. Right. We can actually do it for a lot cheaper because then everybody that's already there will be very upset, right? So you can't, it's a thing that once you go down that road, you can't come back. And that's essentially what happened. So colleges are now going down this path where these sticker prices are going over the moon. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Meanwhile, family incomes aren't going anywhere. And they're like, we still have to get bodies. So then what we'll do is we'll just start adding financial aid and we'll start giving out more scholarships and we'll start giving what they called merit aid. And, you know, it's kind of become this big merit aid monster. Mm -hmm. And once you start giving out some of those, then you start seeing all these other reasons you can give merit aid. And pretty soon you're giving everybody merit aid. And over time, that sticker price just kept going up and up and up. And the merit aid amount also kept going up and up and up. So now you have the sticker price way high. The average price that students pay is more than half off mm -hmm. that sticker price. And of course, nobody's actually perfectly average. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so everybody's individual price is scattered all over the place on either side of that net price. Yeah. And now you have no idea what your price is going to be. So true. And so in terms of, um, so tell us how tuition fit works. What, what is it? So people can kind of understand how tuition fit can benefit them. Yeah. The, the thing that everybody wants to know right at the beginning of the process, throughout the process, as they're trying to decide what schools that they should consider, explore, visit, apply to, consider seriously, they all want to know the same thing. Well, what, what, what's my price going to be, right? Mm -hmm. And 
those prices are not hidden in a vault somewhere. They're sitting in the financial aid offer letters that students get by the millions every year. They're sitting on people's kitchen tables or they're sitting on their portal now because everything's online. Mm -hmm. So what tuition fit is, is essentially a cooperative, a way for the public to build the data set that we all want by sharing information. We've all seen how sharing salary information has changed the game for people looking for a job and knowing, huh, that job offer is not close to what that salary should be. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't have that information before and still the until the public started sharing it on salary.com and Glassdoor and Payscale. And it completely changed the balance between the employer and the employee, right? Right, yeah. We're doing the same thing in the college space. The actual prices are sitting in all these award letters. And I happen to know from my own experience working in colleges and universities for a long time, that the way that these prices are organized is actually fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. And you can replicate generally how college pricing works if you know just a little bit about the student's financial situation and academic profile. So. Families share their EFC, high school GPA, and a test score if they've got one. Mm -hmm. They upload their financial aid offer letter. We know how to read the award letters because we made the sausage. And so that creates this big data set that the public can then see. And when families share for free, they get to see all the other stuff that other people like them shared. So this and is something they can do initially for free, sharing right. this information? Right. So when right. you get to that last stage of the college search process and you've got award letters and you're trying to figure out, what do I do with this? Is this a good price or not? Share it to tuition fit and for free, you get to see all the prices that other students similar to yours have received from colleges all over the country. You'll sometimes see offers from the same schools you applied to. And sometimes those aren't the same as the price you got. You'll see prices from similar schools that you didn't apply to. All of that information now becomes really useful in deciding, should I accept this offer? Should I appeal? Should mm -hmm. I just push back? Should I just walk away? Right. It allows them to essentially compare what other students who kind of meet their profile are receiving for financial aid. So, in, so they're sharing information such as this. When would... So when should students and families come to tuition fit for the first time? Yeah. What, what is your recommendation? Well, there's two times in the college search process where the decisions that you make directly affect your final price. And one of them is at that stage where you start getting award letters. Right. Um, and that's sort of obvious. And of course, that's what we just explained. But the other stage is at the very beginning of the process, when you're just starting to build your college list. And I'm sure you've seen this and people have heard about this where they've somebody built their college list of a bunch of schools they heard of and they could get into a bunch of them and they did. And then every single one of those schools says, we'd love to have you come and pay full price. <laughs> and yeah. the family says, there's no way I can afford that. And so you go, I, why did I waste my time even doing all of those visits and paying to send those applications in and everything else? Because there's not a, those are schools I couldn't afford in the first place. So, so they, they can come at the very beginning. Yes. So maybe juniors in high school, the, um, you know, their, the spring of their junior year, even the summer and, and early fall, probably of the high school senior year. Absolutely. Right. And you can, because students in the previous year have been sharing data now for several years, actually, you can come on to tuition fit for free and just get lists of schools that we know are in the price range that you select. That's so you great. Can, you plug in your test score and, or not a test score actually at that point, you plug in your GPA and an estimated EFC. And I'll show you all of the awards that other students like you have shared. And then you can narrow it by whatever your price range is and know that the schools you're looking at are gonna be in your price range. Forget about what their sticker price is. Even forget about what their net price is. Mm -hmm. This is now for you. So you can use tuition fit and there's a, there's an upgrade that people can choose to pay for if they want for some more granular data, but you don't need that even to just get a sense of 
a starting point. It's a great way for students to really build their list, their college list, so they know right up front. I think that's one of the biggest things that that um, families are faced with that aren't aware of how this all works. They get those financial aid offers and they see that their bottom line is significantly higher than they could have imagined. So by signing on with Tuition Fit or starting an, a free account, they can kind of build that list that more accurately represents like what they can afford as a family, which I think is pretty awesome. Yeah, this is, you know, this is the whole idea is to empower the families and students at the beginning of the process and get them to really realize you can have a, you can have information that allows you to to not get caught later on you know backhanded by these price tags um it's a really weird scenario we're in with this higher education marketplace where the institutions essentially get to tell you what they think you should pay and what they think you can afford even right mm -hmm. um it's just a weird thing so the this data then gives you a situ a, a, the sense of control and right. gives you a sense of of what's what am i picking now and how does it set me up to be successful later because everybody knows that if you you if you ended up with a bunch of award letters at the end of the process that are all in your price range you have even more power to negotiate a better price mm -hmm. at the end so in order to get a list of a, a set of award letters that are all in your price range so you can really get those schools to compete with each other you got to pick a set of schools at the beginning that allow that to happen. Right, and in terms of the schools, not every college is in your database, but Absolutely it's building, yeah. right? It's right. it's currently every year as more people share their information, right. it continues to grow, which right. I think is great. So it, it'll still give students a really good sampling of some options that are available to, available to them. Yeah, the old school way of doing the college search, it was always pick your schools first, then we'll figure out how to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're the seller, if you're the schools, you love that idea because <laughs> you yeah. know then that, that you can essentially push prices up. Um, we really try to start from, let's start with price range before you even start looking at the names of schools. That absolutely means that, and because this is a crowdsourced data set, yeah, not every school is going to be in the data set for every type of student. But once you have a sense of the range that you're looking at and the types of schools that fit in the range you're looking at, you can now go and look at a school that's not in that, that data set mm -hmm. for you. You can run their net price calculator. You can start to get some other data and start to figure out, is this school, where's this gonna sit within that group? Because a lot of times, even within that group, there's a range, right? If you say mm -hmm. your price range is $15,000, well, you still would be pretty thrilled if it was 5,000 instead of 14. Right. It's a great way for students, to, like you said, I, a lot of times I get families that come to me and they don't know where to start, you know, in terms of their college search and how do they know how much financial aid this college offers. So this is a really great way for students to actually begin building their college list. You know this from your experience, uh, I think, and a lot of folks a lot of families at that beginning part, they're just clamoring for just give me something to hold on to information wise. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that people hear a lot about is, well, there's need based aid and there's merit based aid and there's two different categories. And for a long time, those two things were kind of separate and ex exclusive of each other. Mm -hmm. but there's a lot of cases now in institutions where they sort of are starting to overlap and the right. schools will say, well, that's a merit scholarship, but we'll take need into account. What they're doing is just trying to make it possible for those schools to assign as much aid as they need to get to a particular student in order to get them to come. Mm -hmm. And so what we did at Tuition Fit was to say, at some point, you don't really care where the money came from. As long as it's a grant and not a loan, mm -hmm. you don't have to pay it back. So we really try to cut to the chase and just say, bottom line, what's that price tag? So if you're a family that is doesn't qualify for financial need, you know, with the Pell Grant or whatnot, but you know you're going to need to get a bunch of other aid because you don't have the money to write a check tomorrow for the full price. Tuition Fit works great for you because you're yeah. just plugging in your EFC and plugging in your GPA. And now you've organized yourself so that you're looking at people who are in the same situation you are. Right. 
Now, so for high school juniors, normally they would not fill out a FAFSA until October of their senior year. Right. So in terms of putting in an EFC early, do you recommend that um, they just fill out a FAFSA as a junior so, to kind of get that EFC or? Yeah, there's, there are, you know, you know this, the, the, and, and I'm sure that it, explaining this to people has probably caused you and me headaches over time. The formula behind the FAFSA mm -hmm. um, is a pretty complicated formula. And it set is. aside the fact that it's goofy in a bunch of places. Um, but because we know that formula, there's lots of different folks that have built EFC estimators, EFC mm -hmm. calculators that you can use online. And some of them are actually pretty simple. They don't right. do, you know, you can do FAFSA forecaster. So you go to the FAFSA site and they have something called the FAFSA forecaster, mm -hmm. that cool little number in between there to yeah. make them seem hip. And the, uh, you, could, you could do an estimator. Perfect, yeah. But you can also use... A number of others, if you just Google a little bit, you can find some some of them that are a little simpler. They may not be exactly as precise, but at this point, you're just trying to get something that's reasonably accurate. And I think the FAFSA forecaster definitely is a really great resource for students. And I think um, I would that's what I would encourage people to use yeah. uh, that aren't quite ready to fill out the FAFSA for sure. Yeah. Can you tell us uh, why you decided to start the Tuition Fit Project? Yeah. Um, I remember one time she given a tour to a family um, around a campus that I was working at, at the time and wonderful salt of the earth people. And dad pulls me aside and just says, you know, like her mom and I, we didn't go to college and we're really wanting her to have a chance to go to college. Um, but we don't have the money to apply to every school that we'll like just for fun. Um, so we got to decide which schools we're going to apply to and it costs money to apply. Can you just tell us what your price is going to be? And I really like these folks and the genuineness of this, this dad, it really got me. And I just felt terrible because I couldn't answer them. Mm -hmm. I couldn't give them a straight answer. I, you know, you launch into the, look, there's lots of scholarships and your daughter's got great grades and they'll qualify for this and this, but it was a vague answer. And I left that tour, I, I felt bad. Mm -hmm. uh, and I felt like, well, this is really not a great way to do this thing. So that experience really stuck with me. But then one of the things I noticed was in the last couple of years was how many colleges are discounting their prices substantially, like 65% off of the, of the rack rate. It's the price that lots of families are actually really need to find. Mm -hmm. But the family sees the sicker price, says, forget it, never applies. So never finds out that that's a school that actually would meet their price range perfectly. Mm -hmm. And it would be a great school for their son or daughter. But wait a I minute, think the public hates this. The schools are getting strangled by it. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this? That to me was the reason, like when both sides of the equation are getting uh, sort of stuck by the same problem and colleges are terrible at changing anything mm -hmm. somebody's got to do something and I looked in the mirror and said well let's try this and it's great it. it's a great concept and I think you know I think that's one of the first things when I'm working with families as they're doing their college search process is you know explaining to them that to not rule out colleges necessarily because of the price tag you know there might be a sixty thousand or seventy thousand dollar a year college that they get a better financial aid package at versus a thirty thousand dollar a year public college depending on how much financial aid they have to offer so right. it's great it's a great concept and i think this is a wonderful tool to kind of help families you know figure out what ones will be in their price range you're, you're, they're lucky to hear that from you. And I know that your experience gives them the sort of confidence to believe you and, and then actually explore. And certainly when you and I were going to college, you could say to somebody, look, the public institutions are always cheaper than the private institutions and we'd be right. Now, today, that's oftentimes not the case. Mm -hmm. Exactly as you said, for a particular student, that private institution might be much less expensive than the public. Right. 
but unless the family gets that kind of guidance and then trusts you, mm -hmm. they're going to do what a totally normal human being would do. So we really needed to solve this. And the way to do it is by the public's got to rise up and build the data set themselves. And then hopefully we can nudge colleges and universities to say, you know what, maybe we ought to just join in. Yeah, and I think one question or, you know, concern, um, especially in a digital age that some families might have is, you know, they're sharing really personal information uh, to kind of, you know, get, get the information that Tuition Fit gives them. So how do you protect their personal information? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and you're right, this is a trust exercise. And if Tuition Fit doesn't respect that it's a trust exercise, this is never going to work, right? So a couple of things. One is um, we've baked it into our plan from the very beginning. We're never, ever, ever selling, sharing, renting, leasing, uh, giving away anybody's personal data ever. And in fact, this gets a little bit technical, but everything's in the cloud. And the when people create an account, that information ends up in a separate cloud <laughs> from their uh, detailed information about their award letters and stuff. Mm -hmm. So then when somebody uploads an award letter, they do have to share the unredacted award letter with us because we have to just make sure that it's real. And, you know, somebody might upload something that's the wrong thing or whatever. If people are gonna use this information to inform decisions, it's gotta be real. Mm -hmm. But once we see that it's real, because we can assess that, then we redact, we block out all of the private information on that award letter, temporary ID numbers that are on that award letter. The you know, award letters don't have social security number on them anymore, but they anything that links that name person to that award letter, we block that out. We even block out named scholarships. So anything that somebody could Google and say, well, this is a Hispanic male in a nursing program from such and such town, we block that out too. So that we really anonymize the award letter. And then we show that anonymized version to the user and the user gets the chance to approve it or reject it before it goes into the system. Great. So the user actually gets the last say on, yes, I'm comfortable with that anonymized version. We've had people say, hey, can, I'm just, can you block this other thing out too? Mm -hmm. And yeah, okay. No because problem. it's ultimately the user's comfort that's so important. That's and great. so that has really made this process uh, respect that trust exercise. And all the award letters that we have in the system, they're all anonymized. You couldn't tell whose they were, even if you tried. That's great. And I think, you know, just to kind of um, tie things together, you know, how do you think or kind of end, you know, this wonderful interview, how do you think this data is helpful to students and families? I know, I know, one, it would be it helps them make informed decisions. That's huge. Yep. Yeah. Well, what we're doing for our young people, and I'm going to say this as a dad for a second we're launching them into adulthood. We're trying to help them really launch into a successful adulthood. And go, sending them off to college is sort of a proxy for that. But a lot of times we've sort of gotten hung up on the proxy as the real thing, like sending them to college is the adult, the launching to adulthood. And what I think happens with this data is it sets in motion one, obviously, you're able to make much smarter choices about value and ROI and really be more focused on, look, this is a student that this is a school that our student like ours got into. It's in our price range. So we don't have to worry about all that other stuff. We can spend more time talking about how do we think about the other stuff that we're going to need to do to really launch successfully? How do we make sure that we succeed and thrive in college? Because just going to college isn't great if you don't finish. And if you don't finish right. and have debt, you're actually worse off 
than not going at all. Mm -hmm. We can now shift to thinking about really achieving the outcome that we were going for all along. At the same time, I think we set in motion something that we as parents have been doing all along. We've been preparing our student to succeed in life, which means they are resilient, they are adaptable, they can thrive in lots of different situations because we raised them that way. And mm -hmm. we now rep, sort of represent that mindset more fully when we say to our students, you know what? I think you could succeed anywhere. So now let's just think about it in terms of the right value, the right ROI, the right price. And then when you launch, you can do anything because you got no debt or very little debt holding you back. Right. And Which is huge. As a dad, like that's what I want for my son. Mm -hmm. And I think at every parent, that's what they want for their kids. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, the, it's scary seeing the debt that a lot of these students and parents get into to, to try to go to the colleges, you know, that they feel are their dream school when there's all these other great colleges they might not even be aware of that right. would be much more affordable right. and not strap them down with that debt. Right. And, and, and out, I, the students succeed at every college out there. Yeah. There's doctors exactly. and lawyers coming out of every school out there. Exactly. And, and yeah. I've come a lot, I've come across a lot of resources with the work that I do over the years. I've been in the field for 30 years now. And I, I just want to say, I think that the, this is a wonderful concept and I, I'm really going to encourage everybody that watches this, all my followers to give tuition fit a try to start out with a free account. And then when the time comes and you get those financial aid award letters, actually upload them so that tuition fit can continue to grow its database of colleges and that other students and families can benefit from this great, great program that you created. So I really uh, appreciate that and you for joining me today, Mark. Thank you. You really very kind. And I know the work that you do is really critical for families because what we're building is the data set. And then what families need is guidance to help them use that information. And you, you can't get to that level of clarity unless you have both. Yeah, and absolutely. So we're really pleased and honored to be able to share tuition fit with, fam with families and let people build this uh, data set and then use it to solve what's become a really big problem in our country. Yes, for sure. And before we sign off, can you just let people know where to find tuition fit, how to find tuition fit? Yeah, we're on this thing called the internet. <laughs> I've heard it's going to really... They can Google it. Yes, they can. <laughs> tuition fit, it's all one word, tuition and then fit at um, tuitionfit.org. Not, okay. not com, com, dot org, dot org. And if people have questions, they can absolutely email me at mark at tuitionfit.org. Great. And you're also on Facebook, right? Yes, we're on Facebook. Okay. We're on LinkedIn, uh, even Twitter and Instagram. Good. Wonderful. <laughs> so now that you've all watched this, I want you to go log on to Tuition Fit and create your free account. Thanks so much for joining me, Mark. Thanks for having me, Tina.